So in this video, I'm just going to give you some advice for um, your process pages for AP Art and Design. Um, just remember, this is one of your ways to communicate to the readers. Uh, you know, you have your written, your 1200 characters, you have all your 100 characters, you have the artwork itself, but you also have your process pages. So, uh, next slide. Okay. So from the chief AP readers report, um, two things that I pulled out of there is I'm going to actually talk about the bottom before the top, uh, but that process images, um, were submitted sorry, progress submitted images were submitted as process images. And that was a common misconception that happened last year on the test. And here's an example, like, so progress is just kind of, I did this and then I added this to it and this to it and now it's done, right? That's progress. What they really wanna see is the entire process. So here is the language that they use in the Chief AP Reader's Report. Uh, process images merely show the stages of creating work of art and design, but successful process images include the research, developmental sketches, and media and experimentations that provide evidence of thinking and the evolution of ideas. They wanna see the whole journey. They wanna see what kind of ideas came to you, how you pushed yourself, what did you plan, um, what did you try out? What went into like even you walking out there with your camera in the first place? What are the different kinds of things that you shot? What are the different kinds of ways that you edited? All of that stuff that goes into the journey. And then in terms of materials and processes, um, the problem that they found is that the connections between like what people shot and how they shot them and how they edited them um, didn't always get the idea across. It was kind of like, well, why did they use these colors? Why did they edit it this way? Why did they shoot at this angle? That doesn't help the main idea of the image. So what's successful, they say, is when synthesis, um, uh, the, the, this, sorry, <laughs> demonstrated synthesis when the selection of materials and processes was clear. For example, instead of focusing on developing, sorry, <laughs> developing technical skills with the use of a material, successful works addressed why the material was selected and how it related to the idea. So everywhere in your writing and the hundred characters on your process pages, you should always address the why. Why did you use this color? Why did you edit it this way? Why did you use this focal length? Um, why did you shoot at this angle? All of those things you should be doing on purpose in order to get an idea across. So my advice for your process pages is, you know, you, you have some made already, um, but the first thing is make the layout neat and orderly. So like here, you know, things don't line up. Um, if you ever read a book, you'll notice things, you know, when you have big blocks of text, that's not center justified. It's always left justified. So if you have a lot of text, you want to left justify it. But I would caution you, the readers do not actually have to read anything on your um, process slides. So, you know, just make sure that you're maybe using saying things as briefly as possible to get your idea across you know nothing here is lined up in in design you should either line things up perfectly or have them very staggered from each other when you have things almost lined up it just looks sloppy so this was changed from this to to this so see how everything's a lot neater and lined up and it's much more clear. Everything is labeled. We see what it is. We have certain things in bold. The eye is automatically going to go to those things first, even if they did not have time to read the other things or the inclination to read the other things, they would at least see brainstorm, idea, experiment, that would kind of go into their brain, whether they wanted to read it or not, because, you know, we notice headlines and we notice certain words when they're bolded and um, emphasized. So, you know, just put that in there because we really want to show them how we experimented, how we practiced, how we revised, 
what the synthesis between the materials and the processes to get our idea across. So again, having things lined up, making it just a lot more sense, you want them to use their brain 100% on your ideas and your content and not have to use their brain trying to make sense of what am I looking at and where am I looking? And that leads us to the next thing, which is you want to label each section. So, you know, this would be kind of the before and yeah, we see a sketch page and we see some images and it says final photo, but we're not quite sure is which one, maybe it's the big one, but um, wouldn't it be a lot better like this? And we have used headlines and have labeled things again, showing practicing ideation. So this is where we show practice and the idea is female friendship. Experiments and shooting, use those key words to show, hey, you're looking for us to experiment. Look, I experimented. And then maybe final photo. And then, you know, possibly this would be a great place to throw in a couple other things, emphasizing 2D design skills, emphasizing, you know, that materials and process um, and synthesis for the idea, you know, like bright edit looks upbeat, right? Um, so the why that you did things. And sometimes like uh, having like a, a shift in the background color or something like that. I would also suggest overall in terms of neatening things up for all your process pages. They, I mean, they don't require this, but I think it's a lot nicer and less jarring to look at if you come up with certain fonts and um, a color scheme and just stick to those two or three colors, um, stick to those fonts and just have them look a little bit more unified. Um, I also think that if you are going to have like sections and if you use a border instead of it, that one pixel border, you know, make it two or three or point border. It just makes it look a little bit more professional. So here we have everything labeled planning, research and inspiration, process, final product, and it helps guide the person through so they know exactly what they're looking at. And again, they can spend more time thinking about your content than they do your layout. I would point out your 2D design decisions because that's also a part of your grade. So instead of having something like this, which maybe showed some like experimentation and stuff, like use it to point out the things that you're doing. What was the student doing? The student was combining and juxtaposing images together, right? And then like putting them together, showing kind of what they did in Photoshop, but then saying outright, altered directions to create rhythm, contrasting texture, contrast scale of small and large leaves. So you're explaining very simply, but you're also using those 2D design words, contrast, texture, scale, rhythm, right? You have those in there. So you're kind of shoving it in their face. Like, look, I am using 2D design skills. And then you want to explain the why. So it's not just like, oh, I just went around and took photos of whatever I wanted. No, you had reasons. You made active choices about what you photographed. So like this would be, this was actually submitted by one of my students last year, but I would maybe change it up and just say like original photo and then process an idea. So converted to black and white. Why did they convert it to black and white? To give it a colder feeling keep the sign uh, color in the sign when the rest is black and white. Why? To emphasize the neon glowing feeling. Here they made it darker. Why? Because they wanted more contrast to emphasize the artificial light. Emphasis is also one of those 2D design skills. So again, using the AP art and design vocabulary and what appears in the rubric and showing them this is exactly where I did this. So I think this is a uh, maybe a little bit better than the last version, again, because it's pointing out process, it's pointing out idea. And overall, this shows experimentation. So it shows both experimentation and synthesis of materials and process uh, to get the idea across. Here, here's another one, using that keyword, what's the idea? It's recreating memories. What was the process? You know, simplistic images to show the idea of memory. Um, 
nostalgic activities are some of the things that you would photograph. So those are your materials, whatever you photograph is your materials, you know, surfing, crabbing, snorkeling, process shooting from different angles, getting shadows and contrast. That's part of the way you would take the photos using nostalgic colors. All of this stuff on the right side is to get this stuff on the left side across. And again, here it shows some of the planning for it and some of the ideation. Then with your tree diagram, so I have my students do a tree diagram that shows their whole journey. I would put like SI journey or my experimentation through my sustained investigation, something like that, and then label each part with a phrase describing that part of like the branch off the tree. So that anyone looking at this would understand, maybe even someone who's not trained in AP would understand, oh, what is this? This is your journey. This was your starting idea. It led to this, which was artificial light sources, which led to this, which is setting up artificial light sources with portraits, which led to this, which was recreating light in Photoshop. Uh, another branch off the tree was using fire as a light source, which led to warm and cool colors. Another thing was highlighting street lights and reflections, which led to city lights. Another thing was artificial lights through the window and cinematic and light coming through the window with a subject. So showing them really this led to this, which also led to this other thing and showing them the journey of all the different things you've experimented and all the ideas that you've gone through um, for this uh year in terms of making your sustained investigation 